good morning. Welcome to our online worship. My name's Jo Neary. I'm the team vicar in the Beminster team and it's good to welcome you here to our worship for Easter, the third Sunday after Easter. A couple of notices for you. If you enjoy what we're doing and you've got some feedback, do send us an email. Revneary at gmail.com is my email or there are other emails available on the Bemister team website. Do send us a message to say, say what you enjoy, what you'd like to see differently. We've had some very amusing feedback, uh, including the fact that my face is too big. I'm sorry, I can't do anything about the size of my face, but there we are. But we love to hear from you and to hear what God is up to in your lives at the moment. So do message us and uh, we hope to share those messages in future acts of worship. I know that people gather at different times on a Sunday, but at the moment we're trying to have coffee together at 10 o'clock on Sunday mornings. Uh, that's via Zoom, which is an online video conferencing app, which you can access on your computer. And then let me know if you'd like an invitation to Zoom coffee. And we'd love to see you there. It will go out as well in our um, weekly update from David and that should be forwarded to you if you're a member of our church community through church wardens but do be in touch with us uh, direct by email and we can invite you it's not a closed shop at all please come and join us for coffee happy birthday to those who have had birthdays this week uh, happy wedding anniversaries if you've been celebrating and welcome back to school if you like the vicarage family have been back at your desk this week I hope that you're doing OK in this time of lockdown, but if you aren't, if you're struggling and things are difficult, do please get in touch with us. There are people who are really happy to listen to you, to pray with you on the phone, uh, to support you in any way we can. And the same goes for the food bank in Beminster, which is open and available if people are struggling financially. If you know of anyone who could uh, benefit from a parcel from the food bank, please do uh, point them in the food bank's direction or give them my phone number or email and we can be in touch. So let's begin. Our order of service can be found on the church. Let's start again. Our order of service can be found on the Beminster team website so you can follow along or you can just join in with the words you know. Our gospel reading today is read by Reverend Fiona Beale, our curate, and the gospel message, the reflection on that gospel, is delivered by Canon David Baldwin, our team rector. Our hymns today have been recorded by the organist from St Mary's Beminster, Martin Schellenberg, and we use them uh, with copyright permission so you can join in and sing together with us. So let us come together in a time of quiet as we prepare to worship God. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, Alleluia. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Give us the joy of your saving help and sustain us with your life-giving spirit. Our first hymn is Christ the Lord is Risen Again.
as we worship, we have an opportunity to come before God to say sorry for the things that we have done wrong and to know and ask for his forgiveness. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. We pray, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore to us the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so we pray together the collect prayer for this third Sunday after Easter. Let us pray. Almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladdened the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, give us such knowledge of his presence with us, that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life and serve you continually in righteousness and truth, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We say together, glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God. You take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2, beginning at verse 14. On the day of Pentecost, Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus, whom you crucified. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, repent and be baptised, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptised and that day about 3,000 persons were added to their number. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is Psalm 116 verses 1 to 3 and 10 to 17. I love the Lord for he has heard the voice of my supplications because he inclined his ear to me on the day I called to him. The snares of death encompassed me, the pains of hell took hold of me. By grief and sorrow I was held. Then I called upon the name of the Lord, O Lord, I beg you, deliver my soul. How shall I repay the Lord for all the benefits he has given to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfil my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful servants. O Lord, I am your servant. Your servant, the child of your handmaid, you have freed me from my bonds. I will offer to you a sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfil my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Alleluia. Fiona is going to read our gospel for us. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. 
Glory to you, O Lord. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And talking with each other about all these things that had happened, while they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. For their eyes were kept from recognising him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him. Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to die and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning and when they did not find his body there they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said but they did not see him then he said to them oh how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on, but they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went into stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognised him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. David is now going to share his reflections on the gospel passage. Today's reading from Luke's Gospel, for me, says something about Jesus teaching and teaching on the road. We hear of him teaching his disciples in the scriptures on the road to Jerusalem. And here today, as uh, these two characters, Cleopas and another, walk along, he comes alongside them and in a way he's teaching them part of understanding of pilgrimage, journeying together and learning uh, together. It's very easy sometimes to hear these stories that are so familiar, particularly as we hear these particular stories every year uh, in, uh, in our Easter readings. And today we're asked to think about just what was going on in the minds of all uh, so soon. We're told in this reading that this is later in the day of that first Easter day. The later the women had been to the tomb and discovered it empty. Angels had told them that he'd gone away, uh, that he was not there anymore, he was risen. 
And now here are two more characters. Who were they? Well, Cleopas and who? It's nice to think that perhaps it was his wife that uh, he was discussing. What were they saying? What was the debate about? Were they arguing about all that had gone on in the process of that day? Were they just astounded? Were they angry? Were they upset? Were they consoling each other? Of course, we don't know and never will know what was going on at that moment. And suddenly, a stranger, a stranger, they did not recognize Jesus. He was a stranger, comes amongst them and walks alongside them. Isn't it interesting, again, that people didn't recognize Jesus at that moment in his newly resurrected body? It, it's a very strange concept to have to try and understand. Almost a blindness there, perhaps similarly to Paul on the road to Damascus, blinded, which was only at a later point that he recognized God in that. A great revelation uh, to him. And for these two characters, as they get to the end of their day, and they invite him to go, uh, the stranger to go with them, suddenly they recognize him in the breaking of the bread. Something that we do every week as part of our Eucharistic communion services. We break bread together. And at that moment, our Lord is with us, physically, almost, in a sense of being together as one body, one church of Christ in the places where we are. And surely that should be one church of Christ spread across all of our communities. And maybe when we get back together, whenever that may be, that should be the first thing we do. We break bread together as one community, one body, one family of Christ in the place where we are, in the community that we share together. I do urge you to continue to read uh, these wonderful stories that we hear. You can pick them up each week online, of course, on, on the website and uh, in all that we're producing. Have you thought that in the breaking of your bread each day, that Christ is there, feeding you spiritually, feeding you with bread of life, life that is precious to God. May you and I be blessed, and may the week ahead be a, a week of journeying together, learning with each other, making sure that Christ is at the centre of all that we do. May you be blessed today and always. Amen. We affirm our faith in the words of the Creed, saying together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. We come now to our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Lord God, keep us close to one another as the body of Christ. Help us to know that our individual acts of worship are of worth to you. Make our churches and worship relevant and useful in the world and honest about the struggles we face. Keep us truthful and honest and keep us close to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we thank you for the tiny silver linings we see in your creation at this time. Decreasing pollution, cleaner oceans, lower carbon emissions, flourishing wildlife. Help us to continue to care for your creation, to work together to reduce consumption, to be concerned and active to prevent further damage to the world. We give you thanks for Elizabeth, our Queen, in her birthday week and ask you to strengthen her. 
we pray for our government, whether we voted for them or not. Give us and them wisdom, compassion and integrity. Help us to work for the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we thank you for the astonishing acts of kindness we see in our communities. We give you thanks for the generosity and hard work of those keeping our community lives functioning. We pray for all those involved in food growth, production, distribution and selling. We pray for teachers and support staff and those endeavouring to follow learning at home. We pray for anyone who is lonely or isolated. Help us to find ways of walking alongside them and helping them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, the world is suffering in so many ways. Free, heal and restore those who are broken hearted in pain, suffering from abuse, are trapped in destructive relationships or addictions. Help people access the support they need. Help us to know how to help and support each other and give us the capacity to take care of ourselves. Help us to know you in any suffering we experience and free us from any shame or lies that surround us. Support all medical staff and carers as you equip them to heal and restore patients in their care to life in all its fullness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, it's a tough time to mourn and a hard time to have a funeral. We remember those we love but see no longer and we ask you to help us feel joy and love as we share memories of loved ones. Surround all who mourn with your love and peace and help us to be good at walking alongside those on a journey of grief. Fill us with your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we pray for ourselves. We are mindful of the things that have worried or concerned us this week, the things that have frustrated us and the things we have delighted in. Keep our hearts open to your love. Keep our eyes open to your activity in the world. Keep our hands open to receive your gifts and to share them with others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So we offer together our thoughts and prayers in the words that Jesus taught us, praying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Our second hymn this morning is Alleluia, Alleluia, Hearts to Heaven and Voices Raise.
we come to the end of our time together. If you're watching this on Sunday morning, do join us at 10 o'clock for Zoom coffee. Um, if you're watching at another time, why not join us next week at 10 o'clock on Sunday for Zoom coffee? So let's pray for God's blessing. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.